guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Friday. Um, I know it's been forever since I've uploaded a video, but I thought I'd get back into it with this winter season and show you guys some flies I've been tying up and fishing with some pretty good success. So this first one is Devin Olson's Blowtorch. Um, mine's a little bit different. It has some different uh, materials mixed in. I tie a bit of a more natural version of it. Um, his is pretty flashy which isn't a bad thing, but this one's been doing pretty well for me, but uh, obviously a lot of inspiration from his original pattern. Um, if I change the background here, you can see the CDC collar is a, a pretty cool aspect of it. I think it gives it a lot of movement and uh, it just looks a little bit more natural and buggy. So, But uh, we'll get a fresh hook in the vise here and get right at it. All right guys, so to start off this fly, I'm coming in with some UTC Ultra Thread in fluorescent orange. Um, this first thing we're going to do is just kind of build up a, a bit of a thread dam behind the bead to kind of secure it in place and make sure it doesn't move around on us too much and kind of set that angle. So right about there you can see it locked in place and that um, groove should be right over the top of the hook. Just trim off your waist here. And next I'm going to come in with the tail fibers. And what that is, is um, it's called Congo hair, and it's this bright orange synthetic. And you can get it in all kinds of different colors, but it's uh, made by Fly Tires Dungeon, is where I purchased it from. And what you want to do is just tie in that and keep steady pressure on this section um, and pull straight backwards, and that keeps it on top of the hook. We're going to come forward and just trim off that front end. And then what I do is come to the back and just trim off, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's a little bit past the bend of the hook, basically, and just trim it off completely flush. After that, we're gonna tie in our rib, which is some uh, sulky fiber, sulky material. I got this from Joanne Fabrics, and um, it, it's just a really durable, it's a tinsel type but it's uh, kind of like flashaboo, but much more durable and much smaller. So we'll tie in a piece of that in the back. Just with a nice loose wrap, pull it to length there. And then right along with that, we're going to tie in some 6X tippet. And this just gives the fly some more durability um, as you start catching fish and their teeth may break that silky tinsel. All right, next I'm gonna come in with some dubbing. This is beaver dubbing, and I like um, I like beaver because it creates a really nice tight dubbing loop, nice and compact, or dubbing noodle, I should say, not loop. So I'll just start adding some of that to the th thread here and kind of create a nice dense dubbing loop. And we're just gonna try to cover up all the orange underneath as we move forward. Keep it pretty thin with just a little bit of taper. I'm gonna add some more in there. Pretty thin with just a little bit of taper towards the head. All right, so once our dubbing's in place, we'll go ahead and start wrapping up the rib material. We'll start with the silky fiber. And I'm going to go um, opposite and counter wrap this part so it doesn't sink down in the dubbing as much. And then wrap the monofilament the same way we wrap the dubbing. So you're counter wrapping the sulky fiber. And capture that. All right, so now we're going to actually make a dubbing loop. Um, so we'll take the thread, create a loop in the thread, go around the base of the thread twice with your bobbin, and that uh, creates a loop. I think you can see it in the camera there. Um, and then we're gonna add a dubbing spinner tool to that. Uh, it's just this little hook that 
holds the thread. And what we're gonna do is really create a CDC dubbing loop. And I'm using Trout Hunter um, Premium CDC in a medium dun color. And you can see that's like a nice gray, uh, natural dun color. And I'm also gonna go ahead and swap out the background here so you can see that CDC a little bit better with the black background. So here's the feather I selected. As you can see, it has some nice uh, long fibers that you can work with. And I preened them backwards on the stem so we can kind of capture that in the dubbing loop. What I'm gonna do is, like I said, preen the feathers back and I'm gonna open up that dubbing loop and just place one side of that feather um, into the loop. Like so. And then I'm gonna close that loop back down. I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut close to the thread and just cut that feather right off like that. So hopefully you can see that length of the loop there. Just captures your CDC. And I'm gonna go ahead and spin that up with the spinner. And once I have that spun up, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and swap it over to a pair of hackle pliers here. And I'm gonna grab the, the base of the thread and pop it off that, that hook. So you should be able to see it there. What you have is just a, a nice leggy looking um, dubbing loop that you can wrap just like hackle. And as we wrap, I'm going to take my fingers and kind of just preen those fibers back as I go. And then as I preen it, I'm gonna take a wrap and just keep doing that, those wraps right next to each other. And once we get up to the end, I'm just gonna capture that dubbing loop with a few wraps of thread. And you can trim that excess off. Now I'm just going to kind of brush those back, secure the end of the loop down and kind of start to create an orange hotspot collar. And go ahead and whip finish. You can kind of get rid of any stray fibers you have there. Um, it's a little bit left over down there from the dubbing loop. And the final step here is to, if you want to leave your um, CDC that buggy, that's fine, that long. But what you can do instead of just cutting it, you can bring it back, and I like to bring it, uh, cut them off just a little bit short of the tail. So I take just my fingers and kind of pull them. And what that does is cut them with like a more natural end to them. Just about like that. So, but uh, that's, that's pretty much how I like my blow torches to look. Um, hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you on the next one. God bless.